Uh, let me give you a little intro about uh, our guest today. Her name is Aditi, and she's the one who's in charge of uh, the website Racing World Children. Uh, she's also a writer, and she uh, wrote this amazing book uh, called Strong Roots Have No Fear. So we will be talking about her book. Uh, it's available in Amazon. You can get it uh, on Kindle for free. I am um, kind of working my way slowly through it. I haven't had a chance uh, really to finish it, but I love her format and hopefully she will be joining us soon. So she told me she was getting ready, but uh, how are you? I hope everyone is doing great. Um, okay, so here she comes, hold on. Hello. Hello, Aditi. How are you? I, I, um, I hope I'm saying your name correctly. Yes, you are. Now, I'm trying to look a little pretty like you. <laughs> Just put one of the filters. That's helping. <laughs> yeah, but I'm trying. I, I'm not. Oh, that's weird. Oh, no, that's not good. Ah, this is nice. This is nice. I like that. Awesome. Okay. Now, how do I switch this off? Okay. Uh, that's weird. Oh my goodness, I'm not playing around. I promise it's not listening to me. <laughs> okay. I think that's nice. But I can't see myself. Does, is that, does it do that? No, I, I am able to see you. Now you just turn it around and I'll, yes. now I can no. I, I can Can you make out I don't do this enough? <laughs> <laughs> No, but you're doing great. I can see you clearly. Awesome, good. As well. So how are so, you? Welcome to Mama Tortuga Live, community friend. I'm so mm -hmm. glad we are able to finally do this. Uh, last time yes. you got sick, and we have to kind of like do like a rain check. Everything is oh, going God. on. Yes. The year for school, yes. children. So I Mom, know it's a busy. Yeah, I today morning I went to my son's field day, then I went to the library, and then I did grocery, then I came here. <laughs> I was like, crazy day. Well, yeah. the, the, the small acts of love that mothers do every day, so believe yes. me. <laughs> yes, I, I, I completely. Uh, but yes. I was telling everyone that you are the person behind Raising Work Children website. And yes. as well, uh, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yes, so I am Aditi Vardhan Singh. Thank you, whoever's joining in and looking at us and uh, hearing this conversation. I am the founder and chief editor of Raising World Children. Uh, we are a platform of uh, 10, uh, 10 contributors right along with me. So it's not just me, it's a lot more writers. And we all write about uh, our parenting struggles, about how we are balancing our heritage with our culture and uh, helping raise global citizens because uh, it's so much more than just, you know, learn, teaching them to balance. We are talking about empowering multicultural families and uh, I do that. And then uh, I have just uh, published my book, Strong Roots Have No Fear. Uh, and I'm happy to say... <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I'm happy to say that people are responding well. They're liking it, which only goes to show how many more multicultural families there are who want to raise children to have strong values and uh, grow up to be good, good people. And uh, that's that's. And I'm a mom of two. I have an eight-year-old and a five-year-old who's going to kindergarten now. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> So that means a little bit more time. Thank you to everyone who's joining in and slowly. Yeah. I know it's a busy time of the year. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. A lot of people are in their graduations and a lot yeah. of people are doing stuff. But I want to remember, uh, remind everybody that this conversation is going to be safe, hopefully. And it's going to be uh, on our uh, IG Live TV and also on our website. So for 
all the links uh, for Anity uh, book and website and social media is on our site. I put a link on our profile. You can go there and check it out. Um, I usually ask our guests uh, five questions, which, you know, are kind of like to have a little bit more background uh, about the person. And um, so Aditi shared that she um, lives in, Virg uh, in Virginia? Yes, Richmond, Virginia. And she has a, a multicultural background. Her children are also multicultural. And you speak many languages, isn't it? I understand many languages. I speak fluently only two. <laughs> I understand a lot of languages because I was raised in Kuwait. And uh, my mom uh, and dad were uh, between a lot of Indians. Like ours is, ours is a Hindi-speaking family. But uh, like my uncles and aunties and uh, our friends, uh, there were South Indians and there were Gujaratis and uh, not just South Indians, Tamilians, Telugu. Uh, then I went to a hostel in Mumbai. So my roommate was a Tamilian. So I picked up a little bit of Tamil, a little bit of Telugu, a little bit of Malayalam. But I understand Gujarati. Uh, the Most of the North Indian languages I understand very well. Like if people are talking, then I'm not lost. <laughs> That's awesome. And actually, something that a lot of people, you know, maybe don't know about India. In India, they have yeah. so many languages. Like it's, it's mind-blowing. Yes. They're still very strong, yes. like by region. Uh, people still speak it every day in their house and they write it and they read it. And that's something, yeah. you know, fascinates me. I always, you know, try to think like they will be nice to come. I learn so many languages, uh, but India is a huge country as well. So oh, I, I imagine that goodness. it's not as easy. <laughs> no, it is humongous in terms of culture. Like, it's very small compared to size, if you say, say to um, United States of America. But culturally, we are, we have like over 200 languages. We have tons of festivals wow. and every festival. And the funny thing is that they're all tied with similarities, like some similarities to everything. But they have so many different foods and costumes and stuff. And so it's like very different. And the music and the movies and oh, we, Indians are big on movies. Yes. So, well, yeah. So, I'm a fan of Indian culture as well, and 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 one of the beautiful things about living here in America, in, Un yeah. in the United States, is that you can yeah. meet people from so many nationalities, and you yeah. can have access to like Indian food and Indian supermarket. You right. know, I go all the time. I get all my spices there because right. one of my favorite food is the Indian food. So I had to learn how to make some of these recipes because what, <laughs> I don't have an Indian auntie. <laughs> so like one of my favorites uh, is the green pickle mango. Okay. The mango like, pickle. Like uh, mangoes here. So I was like, okay, I'm making my pickle. And uh, <laughs> of course, it, it didn't end up like the same, but uh, what one of our beautiful friends that we met through Instagram, um, uh, she called. She called me once, and she's like, "Oh, I have like a lot of uh, green pickle mango. If you wow. would like to have." And I was like, wow. "Oh my goodness, you're amazing! You're amazing!" <laughs> yes. Um, she gave me two uh, jars of her uh, family's uh, green pickle mango. I still have them. I I eat them like. As, as really good uh, gourmet yeah. <laughs> food. I love Indian food. I love the oh, culture. Yes. There's so many layers to it. Yes. And, and I think it's so fascinating that we have the chance to live in a place where we can expose our children to all yes. these wonderful, rich cultures uh, right. because their friends right. are coming from the background. And I guess yes. that's kind of like the layout that uh you know we want to talk a little bit about why uh did you came up with raising world children like why raising world children yes well uh the raising world children is basically uh using my childhood because uh like i when i started i have been writing since 2007 like blogging but freelance writing mm -hmm. i started recently uh, like three four years ago and then I was writing and I started writing and then I I had just become a mom. And then I was writing about my challenges, about how my, uh, how it is so difficult. Like, you know, how our kids 
are uh, i mean they they not very open to learning hindi or you know eating indian food they like fries <laughs> and nuggets you know and uh, and all those things when i'm writing and i thought you know what we need a platform and by that time honestly i did not know there were so many of our us multicultural writers out there but i thought what if i had lot of people from around the world writing on one platform and uh, talking about the struggles they are facing in raising the children daily because like again every culture has so many like you said has so many layers and and we don't know we don't know and the funny thing is we don't know what we don't know right like you have That's no idea what a person uh, in uh, yeah. india is facing who is moving to america and uh, a person who is who's in america is having problems raising their children with indian heritage because there are so many small things that come up like uh, i remember i and i've written about this also in my book that my son used to say why do i need to learn hindi because my teacher doesn't speak hindi and my you know you guys don't speak hindi and uh, we i thought about it i said why don't we speak hindi like my husband and i but the thing is my husband has been in us for now 15 20 years and i was raised in kuwait so for us english is our first language in our head so my husband and i talk in english all the time and lot of our indian friends they their kids naturally speak hindi because they they speak hindi at home and i was like wait a second why don't we speak hindi at home but my husband and i don't so our kids never picked it up naturally so i have to work on teaching them that you know uh, okay this is what you say this is how it is and you don't realize till you think about it and it is so important for us to be mindful about what we are teaching them because uh there are so many things that we do as parents and the kids just see that and then they think that hey you know our parents do it and it's okay to do it or maybe they see it and then they are proud of it and they want to do the same thing but we have to be mindful about every decision we are making and uh, so yes oh god there's a hornet i sat outside because it was a good day but there's a hornet inside my deck now fast <laughs> hornet <laughs> oh god crazy so yeah i i get very scared of insects so yeah um, and even like you know my daughter is scared of bugs so even that is like a challenge that you know kids get over it and stuff so yeah it's it's fun to write about all those things and that's how raising all children came about honestly for a pl- place for parents to come and talk about their challenges and uh, to for all, all of us to grow together you know and learn from each other and uh, it's wonderful that because of raising world children i met you when i met wonderful people like liana and uh, oh my god i'm missing names right now but i love everyone because i learn so much for ev- from every single website that i come across and yeah it's, it's wonderful that we you know i we get to learn from each other so yeah yeah so uh, i i you know i hear you on that and the staff of you know raising children because mama tortuga as well is started once i became a mother and i had the same issue i was like well i'm i'm on this kind of like alone i don't know like what am i doing but i knew that i wanted to raise my children culturally conscious right about the yes. heritage but as well as 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 other people's heritage and um being aware that all of us may have differences but we are all living in the same culture because exactly. we are living in a different culture so right. it's very in how children pick up in those things but how right. we especially people like you say like yourself that you grew up here it's yeah. not like you you know you came uh later on and and yeah. you can you have it more fresh like the language right. the culture the cuisine yeah. and all the stuff but right. you do with that because your family is from there you right. have close connections to those places right. and it's it's a matter of explaining and also encouraging um that curiosity in the children because a lot right. of times parents just you know like say no you have to learn the language because i say so or because yes. you put in society or because you're going to earn money later on but we don't give them a little bit more of the context which right. which is like emotional as well it's part yeah. of who you are it's part of your identity and so important for our children because they do need to know who they are and it's it's part right. of of knowing that all of us have somewhere where we came from it's not it's not just you know like i just show up and yes. <laughs> and, and and that's something that it's about uh making our children mindful 
about that. Exactly. Um, um, I, I wanted to ask a little bit more about your book, um, like Strong Roots Have No Fear. And I have to say, you know, like especially now, it's, it's ringing really strong um, because there's a lot of fear in, in immigrant in migrant um, communities yeah. right now. A lot of the rhetoric that we're seeing, um, yeah. you know, sadly is not friendly towards immigrants, especially black and brown immigrants. Yeah. It, it becomes kind of like really like, it's a demo demonizing, uh, yeah. you know, rhetoric. And yeah. our children see it, and our children yeah. hear it every day. You know, believe yeah. it or not, you know, like my children have been confronted with hateful mm -hmm. uh, speech. And, so and so I, I, I believe, like, it's so important that you kind of like put in, in the title of your book, like, we we are strong. Like, we, we have no fear. Yes. Can you Can you elaborate on that? Yes. So uh, when I was thinking of the title of the book, actually, uh, it was because of what's happening these days, because I have so many people uh, come up to me and say, and this is just normal conversation, even before that, I worry about my child's future and I don't know what's going to happen. And uh, this is before all this, these things had been happening in the past couple of years. And I used to always tell them, I said, why don't you trust your parenting? You know, because you can't control the world. Only thing you can control is how you parent your child and the values you give them. And uh, and that is the only way that we can be assured that our children try to make good choices. Because at the end of the day, they're their own human beings, right? We can't control yeah. them or what they do or, you know, how they're going to behave. But we're going to try to teach them that, hey, you know what? If this happens, this is what you do. If this happens, this is what you do. And... Uh, and of course, every child is different again. So there's no like, oh, one magic trick for every child in the world and every child is going to grow up to become uh, the same, you know. Everyone mm -hmm. has their own talents. They have their own experiences and that makes them different. So how do you make sure that every child is empowered to make good decisions? Is only by parenting them when they're early, you know, in those young years, when we spend time with them, when we make sure that they understand what consequences are, what um, uh, what racial equality is, what uh, how to read, because reading is for me is such an important part of mm -hmm. exploring the world. Because, you know, um, like I just read uh, somewhere, and this is something I believe too, that books are like passports to the world. And, you know, you have to uh, just, you know, read a story and be a part of the story. And, you know, every story has something to say. And so these things are uh, what we can do for our children. And if we trust that, and every single one of us tries to do that, then we can aim to have no fear, you know. It is not like saying, that, oh, you won't fear. Of course, fear is a big part of being a parent. But uh, you have to, in the end, trust yourself and your parenting and your children at the end of the day, because many people fail to do that. We forget that, you know, oh, the child is a person himself, you know. And uh, yeah. I think that's that's where the title came from because I remember even when I was younger, I had a uh, a mom and a son, and she was like, "Oh, he's going to grow up to be a teenager, and he's going to bang doors on me, and he's going to be rude to me." And I said, "Why are you predicting that? Why I can see right now that you're parenting him so well. Okay, yes, there might yeah. be a phase where he rebels. Rebelling is different from being uh, obnoxious, you know." There uh -huh. is a difference. There is a difference from a child being completely rude and horrible to everyone around them than rebelling and saying, hey, you know what, I want this. And, and because that's a rite of passage. A, a child needs to know, you know, how to push boundaries. Because that is an important part of growing as well. But don't assume your child is going to be turned out to be a horrible person, you know. <laughs> He's going to make life hell for you. So, yeah, so all that, all those fears, when I talk about having no fear, I, I believe that every single aspect of, you know, facing bullying or being at uh, all the tragedies that we experience daily or, you know, facing hate from the smallest thing to the biggest thing. We need to be able to teach our children that you are the person who can handle those things and you're cap completely capable of it. You just need mm -hmm. to know and you need to know we are here for you. You know, we are we are a community exactly. and we are, we are no, always, no. you know. You are not alone. And and your title gave me like a lot of insight of one thing that sometimes we take for granted, like uh, like our ancestors, like in, like our roots are very strong indeed. 
Exactly, Because right. Our ancestors many times have to endure a lot of things, even okay. for the fact we are here. <laughs> And I, I yes. you know, I, I give thanks every day. Like, there's so many things that our ancestors have to overcome exactly. for us to be here and having this conversation. And, uh, I mean, for me, it's fascinating. It gives me strength and also it gives me inspiration and kind of like keep up the good fight and say, yes, like we're raising a next generation. We're going to do like better. They're aiming for better and they're always aiming for the peace and the, the right. better world for everyone because right. we are not here for spreading that kind of stuff. We're, we're yeah. spreading here the knowledge and goodness. Yeah. And that's what we, we aim on um, um, when we say like we are raising world children. I always say like yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm raising uh, citizens of the world. I'm not raising right. only children that are just going to you know, right. root for all of their kind. I'm yes. raising children that see everybody right. as exactly. their brothers and sisters. Right. And when they're going to be You know, like, that's what you need to do, exactly. Right. And that's kind of, like, you know, a lot of uh, movements right now are doing, which is, you know, like, spreading these kind of messages to exactly. counteract other messages that are becoming very, very toxic in our societies. Yes. And I'm just saying, in the United States, this is like a worldwide uh, toxicity yes. that we're oh seeing right now. Yes. And in India as well, there's so many things happening at this moment. Yes, yes. And... It's sad to see, but at the same time, I, I say we need to like put way more attention in the people who are doing the good thing yes. and not on the ones that are doing the bad ones. Because exactly. it, it becomes really pervasive and, be, and we become very negative most of the time. I've been through it and I can tell parents, you know, like, yes, yes. it's valid. It's so valid yes. to feel those fe feelings, but... Uh, We are with you. We stand with you. We are in this together. And yes. we're, you're not alone. You have Aditi from uh, Raising World Children. You have yes. Baba Tortuga, Joanna yes. here. You have yes. many, many more. And, and yes. we are dedicated to keep yes. showing the world the greatness that is, yes. is already here. Sure. So I, I want to thank you for all that you do. I, I love that uh, you use all your gifts in order to kind of like uh, empower families, empower oh, children of the thank future. You. And I really enjoy what you're doing in World Racing uh, Children as well as your book. Um, thank is you. there any other project that are you working right now that uh, would you like to share with us? I am actually working on two projects right now. Uh, one is, uh, I'm hoping to, I haven't started it yet, uh, but it's in the pipeline now uh, that uh, it's going to be a collaborative book on what we're doing, kind of like, you know, uh, raising global citizens and what it takes and the challenges we face and just focus on that because my book ranges from from uh, the early years to, you know, from uh, it, it touches upon stuff that I have gone through in life. But I would like, you know, for us from raising world children to move from an online platform onto paper because I love books, you know, I love having those paper in hand. So that's something. That. And then of yeah. course, uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm working on another book about relationships, about uh, teaching kids or teaching girls mainly. Uh, I hope boys also read it, but uh, I know it's very hard for some boys to read about drama, relationship drama. And I want, <laughs> because I feel a lot of hate that comes from on the basic level begins between people. You know, and I think yeah. it's a lot, if we can just counter that early, teach kids early on that, you know, these are the things you're going to come across and you need to be, you need to avoid uh, thriving on drama because that's, that leads to a lot of issues. And I think uh, even if you see the bigger issues also actually start from envy, jealousy, you know, that, you know, this person has that and, and then it just grows, it grows onto the society and it just gets bigger and bigger. So I'm hoping that that book works towards that. So, yeah, those are yeah. the two things I'm working on. So, yeah. Oh, that sounds amazing. And actually, I agree with you. I believe that we should be working better in our community uh, yes. with communication. And yes. especially oh, goodness, different, yeah. uh, different communities. Because sadly, that's kind of like something that I still see as a trend. Uh, we tend to segregate ourselves sometimes 
and believe right. like, oh, I should be only, you know, talking with my own circle all the time exactly. or the people that look like me or the yes. people that believe like me. And, you know, yes. that uh, puts, separate us because we are not used to having conversations which, right. that are not hateful, that are not triggering. And, yes. and uh, you know, I, I hear all the time people saying, oh, it's just that I, I should be able to express myself whatever I want. And I, 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 be, I believe in that as well. But yeah. I don't believe the price of expressing yourself should come uh, in hurting someone else. Yes. You know, and yeah. that's something that, you know, I tried to, as, a, as a mom to explain to yeah. both of my children. I want you to be you, of course, because, yeah. you, you know, you're, you're unique. Yeah. But I don't yeah. want to be hurting someone else's feelings exactly. all the time or just, you know, ignoring them just because you are you and you're going to just, you know, do whatever you want. <laughs> and and it, it, it would be so amazing if we can become a little bit more conscious that yes. um, what affects you will affect me eventually. Right. And the same thing with our environment. What affects yes. the environment is affecting exactly. us. Yes. We are in all of this together. I tell my children, yes. uh, we are in this puzzle. It's like a puzzle. Right. Every time right. uh, a species disappear, something happens with somebody. It's like a piece of the puzzle disappears. You cannot put that right. piece of the puzzle. You know, yes. like you will not have empty space in a puzzle. Yes. And yeah. until we realize that, and we realize, like, we need to start doing things for love rather than hate. Yes. And it's so much right. easier to act in hate. <laughs> I get it. Yes. I, I, I'm with you. <laughs> like I, I will have, I have issues with my anger, but I have yes. to deal with that as well. Yeah. And, and and raising children is not like, oh yes, dear, do whatever you want because you know, like you deserve oh, it. Please. No, we I are don't all believe that. That's how it should be. Are, even if if we, our children are the most fantastic children, their rights are not <laughs> over someone else's rights yes. and and yes. sadly that's kind of like a lot of the trend I, I i see a lot of people that are totally like oh i just don't give up <laughs> you know i'm not gonna say the word <laughs> but i'm like no yeah no, but then i i say this uh, like i say to my son your mood sorry i sorry i cut you off but i was saying i keep telling you just because you are having a bad day doesn't mean that you can take it out on anyone else i tell that and I tell them, I said, a right to speech is something that is a basic right, but that has a lot of responsibility behind it. You can't just say random stuff to people. Oh, I'm having a bad day. I can say whatever I want because that person doesn't know you're having a bad day. That person has nothing to do. Like even most recently, and I think it's even among adults have not understood that. I think uh, last month I was having an issue with someone. And uh, the friend of that person said that, hey, you know what, they're having a very difficult time. I said, I understand they're having a difficult time, but that does not mean they can disrespect me. Exactly. That does not, that's not how it works, you know. I am still, no matter what is happening, I'm giving you the space and respecting your opinion. You huh? need to do the same way. You cannot scream at me. You cannot shout at me. You cannot, that is not the way to be. You be, have to be an adult. That is, that is what's called adulting. Exactly. You know, and by I hope our, ch our children, at least by the, when they grow up, they know how to do that better. Exactly. They know and how to. You're modeling uh, boundary making, you know, like I always yeah. tell kids the same. I tell them I, I have to put my boundaries and everybody's boundaries are different. I'm not saying like, you yes. know, my boundary will be your boundary. Like, no, right, exactly. But, but learn to put boundaries. Sometimes yeah. we are in places where. People are really getting a lot of hurt, and 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 we are justifying it, just saying like, "Oh, you have to be strong." No, like being strong is not taking everything that you think they should take. You're not them. Yeah. You're yeah. you're not them. Like you are you. Right. It's great if you yeah. if you have so much strength in you, like to take abuse right. or stuff like that. Which I'm not advocating for that at all. I'm just saying yeah. that. Uh, we should be able to live in a society that we we are able to listen and honor everyone's feelings exactly. and not yeah. be entitled to just do whatever I want because I don't want to do that or uh yeah and and it's a difficult difficult situation and and i i i'm I'm always pro uh free speech 
But I always say uh, to people that, you know, like tell me, well, they're entitled to say those things. I'm like, well, their free speech threatens my existence. Exactly. When you're saying something that is completely hateful and yes. is aiming to attack an entire group of people. Yes. And, 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 and try to kind of instigate, instigate violence, instigate kind of like demeaning yes. other people. That is not free speech. That is hate speech. So, yes. Uh, and and I, I believe that right now we're really bordering and in, in, in not really seeing that boundary in, in a clear yes. way. We should be speaking up when hate speech is hate speech. And we should be exactly. able to, to like come to this place and say, yes, like, I apologize. You know, there's nothing wrong with, you know, sometimes I make mistakes in my communication. I have to come many times to, to my kids and, and, and apologize. And the reason is because there's there's no shame in, in admitting that we are wrong sometimes. Yes. Yes. And I, I admire actually that in, me, in many people that I know. So, oh, yes, you should. You should. That, you know, like you're because doing you're setting that. an example for your children, right? You have to, at some point of time, say that, you know what, you are responsible for your actions. You are responsible for, and you know, that is why, even when I say raising world children, I say every child that comes in contact with you needs to know, take and, and uh, know what is right and wrong. Like if they, if you see them doing something, because a lot of people say, Hey, that's not my problem. But if that child is in front of you, that child is near you, that child can learn something from you. Like I have, uh, <laughs> I have students, uh, uh <laughs> yeah, very cute. Uh, I uh, I teach dance, like I have dance recitals, so I teach kids. So one of the boys, he came and he said, I was watching YouTube late in the night yesterday till 12 o'clock. And I said, you're not supposed to be doing that. You you should not be watching YouTube late into the night. You should You should have a set time to sleep. You should have a set time to wake up. And that is our responsibility as adults too, you know, because sometimes what happens is parents... The parents don't mean to. They don't agree. They agree with you that you you shouldn't watch TV late in the night. But sometimes they're tired. And sometimes kids don't listen to a parent. They say, hey, parents are crazy. Right? Uh, uh -huh. So it is always great to hear it from a, from a person who they look up to or admire or learn other things from. My son goes for Taekwondo. And the, I love the teacher. He says, pick up your own bag. Why is your mom picking up your bag? Wear your shoelaces. You should, uh, you should say hello and goodbye to everyone. And that is wonderful because if you're a teacher, if you're a parent, if you're if you're a person who's coming in contact with the child, it is your responsibility to set a good example. And mm. I think in today it is so unfortunate that people just step back from everything. They say, hey, this is not my problem. Are you waiting for it to become your problem? Yeah. But sadly what, you what happens, Aditi, is like um, because we, we do live in a society that values autonomy and values uh, my yes. rights over anybody's rights, not, you know, common, uh -huh. rules, common well-being. Yes. Um, yes. I, I have been confronted <laughs> by the parent of a child who was hitting a girl in the face, and the mom wasn't there. And I was, like, telling the child, like, you need to stop now. Like, this is violent. Yes. Like, don't yes. do it. And, and I can see the mom coming from afar. <laughs> Like she was yeah. charging at me as a bull. Like I can feel like she was like, and then she's yeah. like, what are you talking about? Like, this is my child. You yeah. don't have any right to say anything to my child. And I was like, excuse me, you weren't here when your child was punching this girl in the face. Yeah. Oh, that's not your problem. I was like, no, it is. They're children yeah. and they were right in front of my face and there, was, there wasn't any responsible adult with yes. both of them and and I cannot I cannot stand that, especially when it's violence. You know, like I I won't stand yeah. it. And sadly, yeah. that's what happens. Like a lot of the things that are happening in this society, like people are very very afraid of saying something because they say, oh, if I exactly. take kill or uh, you know, like something is gonna happen to me. And well, that I is too much, Joanna. The main thing is, what will my friends think? Oh. What will my friends think? If I say something, what will my friends... It starts from that basic stuff. Like yeah. I put, You and I, we work in social media. You know it is difficult. We put everything out there. You know, oh, we say, we say what we believe in. We, 
how because you you yeah. receive and love, then people are like you know they not comment there but at a party they'll say oh you believe this how i'm like yeah i believe it and i'm will i'm i'm happy to say you don't have the you don't have the strength or the courage to point it out there in public you're talking to me here in private when we both are talking but i at least have the courage to say what i believe in in you know that way so why people are scared because they want they would they want to lose the connections because every connection is made with the thought that oh i will i am making friends with this person because our kids are in the same school i am making friends with that person because my, we can my uh, he can take my kid to the you know for classes mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. there is no relationship building just because we like each other everything yeah. is based on want and needs yeah which so that is why you don't offend anyone we right. want to say hey and people don't agree to disagree anymore they they are like oh my way or the highway either we are we are we are agreeing or we are not going to talk ever again i said hello that's fine we can have disagreement you can believe something else i can believe something else it is good to discuss things why do you have to say that oh no you know f- finished i believe in this and that's it that's not it yeah every perspective changes when i was a when i did not have children i used to think why are kids crying you know why why so much noise and when i have kids i have had kids now for 8 years and now when babies cry i can't hear it also <laughs> when my when my first son was born i was like oh my god this is like the worst sound in the world why is the baby crying and i used to cry myself like you know i can't handle it but perspectives change people change people adapt and that is the most beautiful thing about people and we are losing that because yeah. we don't want to we don't want to open our minds to listen to another person's perspective we don't want to open our minds and say that hey you know what this person might be right maybe they have something to what they're saying and many times it's not even about being right or wrong like lately i've been kind of like let it go like it's part of maturing seriously like right. yeah before i used to care like oh am i right am i right like no not anymore i don't have to be right all the time like oh, flash news you don't have to be right all the time it's just yes. the fact to know that all of us have different personalities all of us come yes. from different backgrounds even in, in inside the same culture in, even inside your own family even you yes. know like i have yes. to keep oh my goodness yes so different and i always say that to parents like remember when you had that baby in, in your arms and you promised that baby that you will love them forever and then they grow up and your child you know you know take their own journey take their own uh identity i seen so many people being rejected by their parents and and that I, for me is like how how can you do that like is your is your child like like remember when you promised to have that child uh and and i get it sometimes it's going to be very difficult sometimes it's going to be a challenge to love your children or even your own family and i'm not saying you have to take abuse i'm not saying you have to take uh like things that are not really comfortable for you but affirm your boundaries but keep having the conversations like for example yeah, for yes. me my boundaries are very very strict in the sense like i yeah, don't yes. tolerate like racism if you want to be in a relationship with me as friend or even my own family you need to know these very very you know like very clear i'm not going to tolerate that and if you if you're going to say th- things are racist uh offensive uh, i will let it i will let you know and 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 i'm open for you to have this conversation but instead of you know like getting offended or saying oh no i'm not uh, why did you say that and and can i explore in it you don't have to tell me i'm i'm right cuz it's not about being right or wrong it's about like growing yeah. together it's about like is this really the society i want we want to be living is this really the right. society we want our children to to live at yeah. and and I, i i answer myself continually this is not the world i want to live my ch- to my children neither for my grandchildren yeah. can we think about it can we really have a moment <laughs> and think about it because uh for me it's sad but at the same time it gives me hope and we're trying to do our best right now uh it uh, being mothers i love that uh, that answer that you gave me when i asked i asked you the question like what are you doing in your community and you told me i'm trying to 
be a good example for all the children that are around me. Like, I love that you feel that sense of responsibility for all the children that are around you because borderline, yes, all of us, all the adults have their responsibility oh, yeah. to take care of the environment, to, 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 to be able to offer some safety for our children, for all children, not for some children, for all children. And because, yeah. and for me, something right now that is, very, very strong this year is working in solidarity. Like if I know like there's a group that really needs me showing up for their struggles and having some empathy, I will. I will try my best to show up because the same way I'm going to need somebody to show up when I, I'm in need, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I want to do the same for others. And I'm thinking yeah. it's, it's typically right now for migrant and immigrant groups right now for a uh, black community and for lgbtq community uh, yes. that for me is very important to show up and say to those kids right now like i am standing with you in the best way i can do it and you know i cannot solve the situation i i'm alone i'm only one person but if we are all in this together, like I say, I always yeah. love mothers that have that sense of community and that sense of responsibility because, yes, we are all in this together. So thank yeah. you so much, Aditi. Do you want thank to you say so much. something in, uh, uh, for our final thoughts? Uh, that's it. Thank you so much for everything you're doing. I, I have only recently met like started conversing with you and talking and it's been such a pleasure to get to know you and all that you have been doing and uh, it is wonderful that we got this chance to talk we should do more of this because it mm -hmm. feels so good sometimes yeah. because it the world is so cynical at this point right that's we need to be told that okay you know what what you believe in what you need what you're trying to do is worth something and in today's world when showing up is just a click away and you can just show up by saying, hey, you know what, I read this and this is like, this is something that everyone should read. I think that's, this is the easiest time in the world to show up for something that you believe in. But yeah. uh, I hope and pray that more and more people realize that, that any problem that arises, when it is, it, it is a very, very long time before it comes to your doorstep. But once it comes to your doorstep, there is nothing that can be done. You have to try your best to catch everything when it's beginning itself and what is happening right now needs to needs all of us to show up together exactly yeah. thank you thank you so much <laughs> for everybody who catch this up live but don't fret it's gonna be safe hopefully if instagram allows me i have lost instagram lives before so I, i'm just okay. saying but yeah, okay. I, if I'm saving this, I will be uh, uploading it in my website and as well as the Yay. IG. Thank you so much, Aditi. Bye, Joanna. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye, friends.